Hello students, we are moving on to chapters four and five of volume three of Great Expectations. Um, chapter four opens with Pip reflecting on his relationship with Estella. If you can turn to page 323, he says, why should I pause to ask how much of my shrinking from Provis might be traced to Estella? Have you ever, you know, have those people that you care so much what they think of you that it ends up compromising your own actions to other people? And and this is the thing. And and Pips recognized this in the past, even with um, Bentley Drummle. He's thought of how he cares so much what Bentley Drummle thinks, and and then reflects, you know, why is it that we care so much what people that we don't even like think about us? And, and, I mean, he does like Estella, but even still, there's this idea that, you know, why do we let other people's opinions end up um, causing us to treat people badly? And so it's on Estella's account that he feels that he, you know, is has this repugnance toward Magwitch, and he doesn't want to have really anything to do with him, that he's trying not to be tainted by him too much, right? And so this is kind of where it is. But um, he says here, why should I loiter on my road to compare the state of my mind in which I had tried to rid myself of the stain of the prison before meeting her at the coach office with the state of mind in which I now reflected on the abyss between Estella and her pride and beauty and the returned transport whom I harbored. The road would be none the smoother for it. The end would be none the better for it. He would not be helped, nor I extenuated. This is going to, we need to hold on to this idea of Pips, that there's this incredible abyss between Magwitch and Estella, because we're going to get some additional revelations that are really going to challenge that notion. One thing you'll find more and more throughout the novel is that Pip is continuing to be very, um, self-conscious as the narrator and you know say okay in the next chapter I'm going to talk about this or just wait because I'm going to be any kind of addressing the reader all the time and being very self-conscious and I I noticed that you know as I'm reading kind of volume three that he does that more and more and he's telling the reader in some respects what to to anticipate so um, in this chapter then Pip travels back to his town to see Estella and um, he discovers that Bentley Drummle is there. Now, remember Bentley Drummle, the awful sort of roommate of his or fellow student of Mr. Pockets. And, and he also um, has learned that uh, Bentley Drummle and Estella have some sort of, uh, you know, dating thing going on. Well, Drummle's there visiting Estella. And chapter five is actually incredibly sad. Pip tells Miss Havisham that he's discovered the identity of his benefactor. And he says on page 328 that it will not be to his advantage. And so we do know that, in fact, this is going to be negative for him. He says, I have found out who my patron is. It is not a fortunate discovery, and it is not likely ever to enrich me in reputation, station, fortune, anything. But he won't reveal it. He says, you know, the secret isn't mine, it's another's. Which sounds very similar to Jagger's, right? That, you know, this is, you can't ask the identity. There's, you know, don't ask. And, you know, this sort of same idea. Uh, Miss Havisham admits that she has led Pip on. And, you know, Pip kind of makes her admit it. He says, when I first came here, you know, it was for this reason. And then, you know, I got the wealth and there was Jaggers. And you, you know, let me believe that it was from you. And then you use that to, you know, torment your greedy relatives. And so, you know, all of this. And Miss Havisham admits that, yeah, you know what, I did. I did let you believe all that. I did do that. Pip also tells Estella that he loves her, even though she he knows that she won't have him. And he also pleads with her not to marry Drum Drummle. But, you know, on many occasions, Estella has told Pip that she is not capable of love. I mean, she's warned him, don't love me. I can't return it. Do not love me. Don't love me. I can't do it. And she says on um, page 332, the bottom of page 332, she says, um, or no, sorry, at the top, uh, you so young, untried, and beautiful, okay, just sorry, actually 331, so don't marry him, etc., she, she says, I told you not to love me, um, but you would not be warned, for you thought I did not mean it, now, did you 
not think so. I thought and hoped you would not mean it. You, so young, untried and beautiful, Estella, surely it is not in nature. It is in my nature, she returned. And then she added with a stress upon the words, it is in the nature formed within me. I make a great difference between you and all other people when I say so much. I can do no more. And she says, yeah, I am going to marry Bentley Drummel. And Miss Havisham has this ghastly look upon her face. You know, she feels really bad about this, that this has happened. And then at the top of page 333, sorry, not the top, uh, middle, she says, such a, or this is Pep, such a mean brute, such a stupid brute, referring to Drummle. Don't be afraid of my being a blessing to him, said Estella. I shall not be that. Come, here is my hand. Do we part on this, you visionary boy or man? And then he says, one of, out of my thoughts, you are part of my existence, part of myself. You have been in every line I have ever read since I first came here. The rough, common boy whose poor heart you wounded even then. And then he goes on. But, you know, she says, I'm not going to be nice to Drummle. Don't worry about that. I'm going to treat him really badly. So, you know, maybe that'll make you feel better. But, of course, Pip cares about Estella. He doesn't want her to be abused. He's going to abuse you. He's going to beat you. The one good thing that does happen from his visit to Miss Havisham is that she agrees to pay the remaining balance on the business deal that Pip kind of has been putting together for Herbert. Um, so Pip is so dejected that he walks back to London, all the way to London he ba walks back. Um, and then when he arrives, though, he receives a note from Wemmick not to go home. And that's it for Chapter 5.